Hello and welcome to Mellow Reviews. On today's episode, I'm having a look at DF Robot's um, uh, MP3 voice prompter. Let's have a look. This episode is sponsored by JOC PCB, your one stop shop to electrical and mechanical projects. They offer everything from PCB prototyping to component sourcing, plus a whole wide range of mechanical services like CNC milling and custom 3D printing. Their website makes it super easy to order and they deliver high quality PCB boards starting from just $2, plus everything arrives neatly packaged in their signature blue box so you know your project is in good hands. Whether it's electronics or custom parts, JLC PCB has what you need. If you want to learn more or just try them out, check out the link in the description to get started on your next project. I like adding sounds to some of my projects, whether it's a toilet that wants you to poop in its mouth or a screaming droid, it just adds a little bit more personality. Unfortunately, I'm usually space limited in my projects. I used to use an Adafruit audio effects board with an amplifier and a speaker, which ends up bulking in size, so I end up just skipping the whole thing. But then DF Robot released this uh, MP3 voice prompter module, and I was kind of excited, so I asked him to send me two of them. Inside the little baggie you get this USB to 4 pin connector thing and this little black pack with a visible speaker and some exposed pins on the other side. And don't forget to take a good whiff of the freshly manufactured Chinese electronics. Hmm, you just can't get that smell anywhere else. Let's talk about technical specifications. It runs on 5 volts, it has 16 megabytes of flash, which is the same as the Adafruit audio effects board I mentioned earlier. It's actually plenty of space when it comes to audio. It supports MP3 and WAV, boasts a whopping 1 watt of power output, and it has a 4 ohm speaker impedance. I don't know what that means. I know it plays sound. Size wise, it's a whopping 11 millimeters thick, not counting the protruding pins, and 30 millimeters in diameter, which is pretty good considering it has the speaker, the USB controller, the amplifier, and flash memory in there. Pretty decent. Let's start by uploading some audio onto it. Grab your USB cable with the four pins and take note where the little arrow on the connector is. It indicates five volts. Apparently when you try to connect it backwards, it tries to commit die. Somebody in the comments of the product page pointed that out. So let's not do the same mistake. And that just plugs in like so. And now we can plug it into the computer. When you plug it in, it shows up as a storage device with 15.8 megabytes of memory. Where's my two kilobytes, DF Robot? I've been bamboozled. In here we have two songs and I'm not going to play them just because I don't know if I'm allowed to. So uh, I'm just gonna plug in some of my own music. Now, whilst he's sorting out the audio, let's go over to the product page and just have a look around. So we have the main photo here and then we've got like the size reference here where we have three centimeters, three centimeters, good, it's a circle, it should be that size. But then we scroll down here, it's three millimeters and 11 millimeters. So this one's correct, but then this one isn't. If I scroll down here, you can see that somebody actually uh, commented about it uh, and they replied to it. Uh, a month ago and they still haven't fixed it. Um, so that's a little bit annoying. Uh, let's go over to the product manual which will take me over to GitHub which links me to a PDF which just gives me a whole bunch of information uh, still with the wrong uh, size on here and uh, yeah this just gives me a whole bunch of um, uh, whatever these are to control the device, but no actual code. That's right, they don't provide you with any code to actually use the device, which is very annoying. I think the most important part of this whole PDF is what it expects the file structure to be. So the first three digits are reserved for track number. Anything after that, you can just have like the track name so you can identify it later. As long as the first three digits are 001, 002, 003, and on and on and on, uh, it should be fine. And you can have a maximum of 255 tracks, which is quite a lot. And also you can have folders. So you can have from one to 99 folders. Now I don't know if the 255 file limit is uh, in total or per folder. Uh, in any case, it's 16 megabytes of flash. I don't think you're going to be filling up that many folders with that many tracks. If so, please send me your screenshots on Discord. I'd love to see what you're working on. Anyway, I'm done uploading files, so let's unplug it and play around with it. To begin with, I'm going to power it through my uh, bench power supply and I'm going to control it using its P1 pin which is kind of like a button pin. It can do next, 
previous play and pause uh, by tapping the P1 against ground. So let's try that. It's a little louder than I expected. Let's uh, let's try next track, which is a uh, short pulse. Those are uh, sound effects from my live stream. Oh, crab rave! Let's listen to that. I'm going to compare it to my phone. It's it's less messy. Okay, you know what? It's it's a lot less messy on my phone, duh. But I'd say this is louder. By default, it sets the volume to 30, which you can't change just using the P1 input pin. So uh, now let's plug it into this Raspberry Pi Pico and control it. I've connected the speaker to the Raspberry Pi Pico using the RX and TX pins, and here I have some code that I had to write to control it. So here we can set um, the volume, which I've got set to 10, and here we can select which track plays. I've got it set to two. I also have a whole bunch of other functions in here, like low power mode, reset module, um, play specific folder and file, random play, stuff like that. I've also recreated the script for Arduino, so if you wanna play around with this module, you don't have to write the code yourself. Just uh, scroll a bit lower, hit the uh, subscribe button, hit the like button, and then scroll even lower and you'll find the link to my GitHub where I've made my code available for you. All right, I'm gonna change this to track number four and when I hit the run on the script, it will play track number four. Justified applause, thank you. Now, personally from playing around with this, I don't think I would personally go above like 25 just because we're hitting the limits of what this speaker can do and it starts getting rough as you've heard. So uh, I'd say 25 is probably max I would go without changing the speaker, which actually, come to think of it. Thank you. I have not tried changing the speaker yet. Since I don't have a spare speaker, we will have to um, retrieve one from uh, a previous project. Luckily, this one's uh, unplugged because this one's uh, a little bit too loud for this little guy. If you'd like to see a video on uh, how this little guy was made, I'll have it linked um, up here somewhere. This is the same module. I've just taken it apart. Now I'm going to desolder the um, speaker and wire in a new one. Right, that's a horrible soldering job because for some reason I refuse to use helping hands, but I've got it wired up. So apparently this speaker has four own impedance and three watts of power output. So um, let's try that. This is at 25. So okay, it's, it's a little bit louder. I'm gonna try it at 30 just to see if the quality improved. And then let's just try Crab Rave. This is Crab Rave at 30, so it's going to be loud. <laughs> just zero bass. Okay, I think that's quite enough. Well, uh, it is louder with a bigger speaker and uh, I guess a little bit higher, better audio. Um, there's still like zero bass, but uh, it sounds a little bit better than the, uh, the cheap one that comes with it. Let's conclude this video. It's a really small speaker 
that will play the audio that you upload and tell it to play with some code. It's really small, it's really cheap. I recommend this. Honestly, this is everything I want it to do. I'm gonna put it in like a little space where I can just run wires to a MCU that's gonna tell it to play audio, and that's kind of it. It works, it's pretty loud. I wouldn't go past 25 just because it starts getting messy. Uh, I don't really have anything else to say. It's a good product. I wish the F robot put a little bit more time into you know, the documentation and everything. But apart from that, it's really good. I recommend it. So with that, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next review. I forgot what episode this was. Goodbye. Hello and welcome. Ah, oh, damn it. <laughs>